1017, Jayco back with you. Good morning, the Jayco Report, the Big 550 KTRS, examining the odd case of Normaine Bennett, age 23, shot and killed by St. Louis police. St. Louis police tell us this morning they can't comment on it, and we didn't expect them to be able to because this is being investigated uh, by both internal affairs and by homicide, which is standard procedure when there is a police involved fatal shooting. Uh, Neighborhood residents say Normaine Bennett never had anything to do with dope, never had anything to do with drugs, was a, quote, college kid. Well, according to police, he had a roll of bills and a gun on him and pulled a gun on police. This coming within the context, as I'm sure we're all aware, of a number of cops being shot or shot at recently around here, and we have done a number of stories on the Jacob Report about that, about how a lot of the perps around here no longer have any fear about opening fire on police. So you've got police who are, shall we say, a little more leery than usual. Joining us now to talk about this is our old buddy, uh, Professor David Klinger, Dr. Klinger, Professor of Criminology at the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Now he's on leave to be Senior Research Scientist at the Police Foundation in Washington, D.C. David, a former cop in Los Angeles who drew his weapon, shot and killed a perp there, and it led to not only him getting a Ph.D. in criminology, but writing a book, and an astonishing book, I recommend it to one and all, called Into the Kill Zone, about what's involved in police-involved fatal shooting. David, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's unfortunate that it's uh, such a sad circumstance. Yeah, amen to that. Now, uh, look, police, as we said, are very, very nervous because there have been a number of cases around here recently where cops have been shot, have been shot at. One St. Louis officer was shot four to six times recently but survived because he was wearing a vest because he pulled somebody over and for a speeding violation, somebody in the back seat just opened fire on him. Mm-hmm. One can see how beyond the normal circumstances of being on patrol that people are a little sweaty these days. Sure, but I think that the uh, the uh, listeners need to understand that regardless of what a pattern might be going on in terms of officers being shot, police work is inherently dangerous. I mean, that's why they give them guns, uh, handcuffs, nightsticks, mace, tasers, whatever, and the protective armor that uh, you're saying saved an officer's life recently. And one never knows when uh, you put on the blue uniform uh, when that uh, that uh, gun is going to come up and someone's going to try to shoot you, when the knife's going to come out, someone's going to try to stab you, so on and so forth. And so while I, I do think it does make sense that perhaps the officers uh, in St. Louis are a little bit more wary than normal, uh, they always have to be wary, and that's an unfortunate uh, part of policing. Now, I, in your book, Into the Kill Zone, you talk by the, about the almost microsecond by microsecond speed right. with which one of these things happens, where you have to make a decision about life or death, generally yours or somebody else's, within less than a blink of an eye. Uh, given a circumstance like this, where there is confusion, one officer is being pummeled by members of a family saying, leave us alone, this kid runs from cops, Uh, and another officer is pursuing him. Uh, One can imagine that that is one of those textbook examples of of stuff happening second by second. Sure, and uh, one of the things you have to understand is what is the officer's mindset? Why is this suspect running from me, or why is this individual running from me? I've got a legitimate reason to detain him. He is not cooperating, and um, there is dope involved, and we know that oftentimes dope and guns go together, so I have to be on the alert that perhaps this individual is armed, and then the individual starts behaving in a fashion that's indicative, apparently, of him drawing a gun. Then you see the gun. You really don't have time to figure out uh, what's he going to do with that gun. Now, one of the things I can tell you, uh, people do crazy things uh, when cops are pursuing them. I've had three people uh, pull guns and uh, drop them on the ground because somehow they thought that if they didn't have the gun on them when I caught up with them three seconds later, that I couldn't arrest them for the gun. And in those microseconds, me trying to figure out, do I need to shoot this person or not? Fortunately, in those cases, I didn't have to. But officers are are, are aware of that, that maybe this person is not trying to kill me, but maybe he is. And sometimes you just don't have that extra little bit to say, I can hold my fire. Sometimes you just have to start shooting because once that gun is presented, you've said, halt police, why else would they be pulling the gun out? Maybe it's to try to drop it, but maybe it's to try to kill me. And um, when you're faced with that decision, it's never wrong to say, I think he's going to kill me. But uh, the protocol in, in these after the fact, which the St. Louis Police Department told us about, is that internal affairs and homicide are both investigating, and this is how it always works uh, when a police officer uh, shoots and kills someone in the line of duty. Is that is that pretty standard operating procedure in departments around the country? Well, in, in terms of parallel investigations, it really depends on what you mean by investigations. But generally, yes, there's going to be an investigation into 
the question of did this officer's action conform with the state law in Missouri, in Illinois, in Kansas, wherever the shooting occurred. And then secondarily, there is going to be an internal inquiry about whether the officer's use of deadly force was consistent with that agency's shooting policy. And so in St. Louis, what they do is they have these parallel tracks from the beginning where the investigators from homicide go ahead and do certain things, and the investigators from internal affairs go ahead and do certain things with the purpose of having these ultimate two outcomes decided. Uh, Internally, it's going to be, was the shooting consistent with St. Louis Police Department policy regarding the use of deadly force? And then it's going to be handed over to whatever organ of the criminal justice system outside of the police department wants to make the decision about whether the officer's decision was within the statutory guidelines of Missouri state law. Final question for you, David. None of us were there when it happened. And these things happen with lightning speed. At the same time, the one thing that is getting everyone's attention in this case is that from everything we've been able to suss out, this kid was not a gangbanger nor a dope slinger, at least normally. Everybody in the neighborhood vouches for him. He did not have any kind of police record at all. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and uh, there's that. There's the issue of why he ran from police. In other words, yes, we know how these things work. God knows we've seen enough of them. But in this one, as in very few others, the pieces don't all seem to fit fit together. Right, and one of the things that the investigators are going to be doing is they're going to be looking at his background, what was he involved in, so on and so forth. And that's a standard part of any officer-involved shooting investigation, what is what we call the pedigree of this individual. They're also going to do a trace on the, the firearm that he apparently had, the money that he apparently had. And, um, you know, I don't know anything about this gentleman. I haven't uh, looked at his uh, his background. You're telling me it's clean. That may all be true, but that doesn't mean that this guy wasn't involved in something nefarious. I mean, how many times have we heard, gosh, I never saw this coming when someone goes crazy and shoots up a neighborhood, when a politician is found literally with his pants down, so on and so forth. And so... You know, unfortunately, we have a public sphere about our lives. People know about what we put out for public uh, viewing, but also people have private lives, and sometimes these private lives are utterly at odds with the public persona. And I don't know if that's the case with this uh, this, this young man, but that is something we have to uh, consider. This could have been the very first time he ever did anything wrong. He finds himself on the street corner, uh-oh, here are the cops, I've got gun, I've got dope, I've got money, I've got to get out of here because... Um, I don't want to get caught, and then he panics. I mean, who knows what happened? Yeah, who knows indeed. David Klinger, Senior Research Scientist at the Police Foundation in D.C., Professor of Criminology at UMSL on leave right now, and author of the book Into the Kill Zone. David, pleasure as always. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Thanks again for having me.